Hi everyone, Kathy Beltran with Sacred Dance with Trance. I'm super excited because I have a fellow member um, with us today. His name is Jason Goldsworthy. He is a international spiritual medium, teacher, and trance healer. He's Scottish, but he's from Germany. Um, so everybody, welcome, Jason. Hello. Hi. <laughs> nice to be here. Thank you for uh, having me on your on your talk show that you're doing here. I love it. Yeah. Thank you so much. We have so many members that have been asking more about um, the healing part. And so I'm just so grateful to you for doing this and sharing um, your work with us. Okay. So usually how we start this off is we always start it off with um, how your journey started. And you can go back as and just give it all, give it all to us and how it all started for you. Well, that's, a, that's a, a bit of a story. When I go back to where it all started, I was always a sensitive child. I was always sensitive. Um, I felt I was more of a dreamer, um, more living in a dream state than in reality. Um, I was always creative and that sort of thing. And there was one time my mum moved house to an older house and she took us all with her and uh, luckily <laughs> but then um what happened was um we all had our own rooms and it was an old house and one night i was sleeping there and i woke up at three o'clock in the morning my room was filled with spirit people oh my goodness and i was scared because i thought now what's going on so i went into my mum's room i said i can't sleep there it's crowded there's too many people um, and she came into my room, put the light on, checked the closet. Look, there's nothing here. It's okay. Can go back to sleep. Um, well, I couldn't, so I had to sleep. I, I slept in, in their room. And this went on for about a week until eventually, I think she lost her patience with me and said, that's it. You're just dreaming. You've got to stop this. There's nothing here. But I, for me, it was real. Um, so I ended up having to put the pillow over my head pretending that they're not there and going to sleep. And that's how I went to sleep every night. Oh, yeah. So basically my abilities as a medium, I sort of closed them off at a young, young age so that I could sleep. You know? um, that was what I was aware of. As a child growing up, always sensitive. My father said to me, I want you to be hard. I want you to be strong. You, be, you know, men, are, men are supposed to be strong and not sensitive. So whenever I showed any sensitivity, he was like, no, because he was, you know, that's not what we do. He was for, more from the Navy and he was like, no, men are supposed to be strong. So that was difficult for me as well, which, um, you know, fitting into this world. And yeah, then as my journey continues, um, I, wasn't, I wasn't your normal kid. When I was 15 years old, I wasn't reading the same books as kids normally read. I was reading books about... How can you uh, hypnotize yourself and go back into past lives? Past lives. How can you? Um, how do you bend spoons? And, and I was reading about building the power and the energy above you, and then bringing it through to build uh, to bend spoons. How did Houdini um, escape all these different places? I was really interested into anything that was like supernatural or different. That was me. Um, I did at one time think I bent some spoons, but I haven't proved it. These, I, can't, I, I don't think I did, but in my imagination, I did. Oh my God, um, I tried to do that too. I, I was totally into trying to do that, so. Yeah, so I was busy with that, that energy work and, and, and working with energy and trying to use energy to move objects and stuff like that. Um, that was all at that age. Um, yeah, later, when I went on to, to, to go to work, um, Working for me was, 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 was more difficult. It was um, fitting into situations, fitting into, um, like, um, into workspaces. And but I would always be, have this awareness more than the, um, yeah, the normal person. So I would come to work, and if someone was stressed in my workplace, um, I'd be like, um, I'd be feeling that stress as my own stress. So one time I was at my work, I was feeling stressed. I felt, oh, I've got this bad neck and I've got all this bad, sh the shoulders are feeling bad and I'm not feeling quite right. Um, until I spoke to my colleague and I said to him, how, how are you feeling today? He said, I'm so stressed. He said, I've got a bad neck, I've got bad shoulders. And, bad. and it was then that I started to realize, 
oh my God, this is, um, this is something. And the more time it happened, the more I realized um, I was, you know, sensitive. Um, in my lifetime, I'll say, I, if somebody said to me 20 years ago, you're going to become a medium and you're going to sit in trance and you're going to do all this, I would have called them nuts. I would have said, no, this is not for me because I was, you know, all I wanted to be was a, a, professional, a professional chef that wanted to make um, lots of money and become famous and be on the telly. You know, <laughs> that, was, that was my dream. And what happened to me was it wasn't in alignment with my soul's purpose. Um, so my story turned when I was doing about 70 hours a week and doing overtime and uh, not having time to see my wife and all this sort of stuff going on. Um, eventually I would have what they call now, I think, a burnout. Um, I wasn't sleeping right. So the doctor thought, I'll give him some sleeping tablets. Well, I didn't know I was a HSP. I didn't realize that because that wasn't invented back then. And burnouts weren't invented back then either. It was just stress. Um, so what happened was he gave me these tablets and I started um, hallucinating on them because uh, they were supposed to put me to sleep. And they put me into what, what you would call, I, I don't know what it's called in your language, but it's where you actually, it, it triggers your mind to go into a sort of like psychosis or something or something, something similar to that, where I was just, I'd lost, I'd lost my awareness and I just thought, oh my God, what's going on? And that really shook my world. And then he started, and I went back to the doctor and said, I can't take these anymore. He said, okay, how are you feeling? Stressed, I'll oh, take these ones. These are for calming you down. Because in Holland, they thought anything to do with stress-related things, they thought if we give you tablets, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And um, the other tablets they gave me, they reacted very strangely to, to me as well. And I had to take some time off work to realign myself and find my feet again after this happened. Um, but because what I was saying was this work was not in my soul's alignment, I really wanted to do it. I was trying to hold on to it so tight. And it, I, in the end, I just had to let go and just say, right, no, um, I need now time to find myself. And that moment, um, even though it was very um, scary for me and strange for me, what I was going through, it was the moment that really changed my life. It was a moment that um, I found um, in myself. I had to go within to find out what, what, do, what do I feel in myself and what were my feelings telling me. But all my lifetime was about closing down the heart chakra, not using your emotions, not having all this stuff going on. So my energy was not in alignment. I was tired, there was all this stuff going on. And then I thought to myself, I need, I need, um, I need some, something different. And I picked up a leaflet about Reiki and I thought, hmm, that's um, something about that Reiki. I think I'm gonna give it a try. And my wife said, Hold on, and it just happened to know someone at her work who was a Reiki master that could give me a Reiki healing. And I thought, ah, that's what I needed. And I must say that Reiki, that, that did everything that the tablets couldn't do. In the end, by the way, the doctor said, I'm not giving you any more tablets, so I don't get any tablets um, stronger than a, de a declofin yak. I don't know what that's called in your country. It's a, it's a painkiller, a very strong painkiller. But if I take anything as a strong painkiller, I end up walking on like, you know, the, the, we say walking on the clouds here, like I'm in heaven. I, I won't be looking both ways when I cross the street. I, use, I, lose, I lose that stuff. So yeah. too sensitive for that. So he, you know, whenever I go to the doctor, he doesn't give me anything more than a paracetamol. Um, so that's something to remember for people that have, have been on this journey as well. Um, that's how I found out when there wasn't such thing as high sensitive people. Um, but when I had this spiky healing, um, I, I, it was amazing. I was like, I was just, I felt everything, suddenly everything opened and I felt uh, the energy surging through me and my hand palms, they just like, they started like this energy coming out of them. They were just hot and they were like, I felt the energy coming from the hand palm from about here to here. And when I put, had my hands down, I could feel the energy coming up to my elbows. And I thought, whoa, this is, this is pretty amazing. But I rang up the Reiki master that evening, because I said, I don't know what you've given me. I said, it's, um, 
I said, you've given me this energy, you must have done something wrong because I can't concentrate. I said, I feel like I'm walking on cloud nine here. There's all this love going on. I can't have all this empathy at my work. You know, this is, I'm not used to all this because I've closed it all down and he'd opened it all up. And he said, don't you worry, I'll send you some energy from a distance. And since then he guided me. He said, you've got to keep grounding yourself. And I said to him, did you give me some sort of attunement or something? Because I said, my hands are burning. I said, no, he said, all I did was give you a Reiki healing. And I said, oh, oh, okay. Um, so I thought my, in my pathway, I thought I've got, to, I've got to learn more about what is this energy? What is this, what's flowing through me? So I thought I will do my Reiki one to find out what it was. Mm -hmm. um, but before I had my Reiki one, it was it was open and flowing, and I was I had to learn to ground myself every day, three times a day, just to you know keep present um, going through that period. Um, I must say, um, when I got in touch with Reiki, it did change my life because um, when I did the Reiki one, I did it for myself, I did it for healing my family, and it was an amazing thing. I could feel the energy. I could feel the auras. I could almost have a glimmer of seeing auras at that time because things were opening up again. Um, and I just felt, my soul felt different about doing the job I did. So my wife didn't see me very much doing uh, the chefing work. She said, can you change your work? Mm -hmm. Since then, I've worked on building sites. I've been washing lorries. I've been doing any other work that I could do just to, um, to live and, and continue. And in the end, I ended up um, working in the, um, in, in the hospital uh, as a, um, what would you call it, a stores person. But I, we would be doing the sterile, sterile equipment that they would use for surgery. We would be putting it into uh, the places and we'd have to wear a green suit and make sure it's all there for, the, for those nurses that would be working with the surgeons. Um, which is all really fascinating, but... It just, the Reiki changed my life because I just thought, I've got to give something back. It was all about me before then and that change in my soul and that change in my spirit, it was like um, I'd been doing it all for me and now it was time to give something back. And that, um, that change happened with the energy. It happened with, um, once he'd opened up, up that uh, with me, uh, I thought it was amazing. And then, uh, I must say, my brother at the time was not very well. He was, um, uh, he was addicted to drugs. He had problems. Um, so I thought, I've got to learn Reiki too, and then I could send this energy to him. And I tried to learn my Reiki too as quick as possible. I learned it, and by the time I got to send the energy to him, it was too late. He passed to the spirit world. Um, well, I was working in those stores and they rang me up and when they told me about him, him past, I didn't realize what was going on. It was just like this all going on from, okay, that's, that's, I, can't, I can't believe it until I see it. So I flew to England from uh, Holland, where I was living in at the time. And I got there and I thought, right, we've got to sort this funeral out, we've got to sort this. And we saw him and I thought, he's going to wake up in a minute. But he didn't. And through all the things that had to be organized around his funeral and all the things that had to happen, the strangest things started to happen. Um, yeah, the, the computer started uh, shutting itself down, starting itself up. Um, it would, whenever it was playing music, it would swap the music to other music. Um, we had a CD player of my brother's and we used to put the music on that he liked and it changed, the music changed. And I was standing there alone in, the, in this room contemplating what were we gonna do for, for his funeral. And suddenly I felt a physical presence standing behind me. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. And I, I thought, there's someone behind me. I looked, there was no one there. But when I felt the hand on my shoulder, uh, like I was getting this, what you might call an etheric hug, it was like, um, I thought, this, this can't, is, is this real? You know, is this real? I had to, you know, I had to like feel my pulse, like, hold on a minute, what's going on here? Um, but it was, and I just felt the whole time so much unconditional love 
and so much support through the whole process of his passing. Um, it was amazing, but it was, it was what I would call a physical touch. And he, I haven't got much hair now, but he can play with my etheric hair um, in my aura. But he did that from that day. And every time I kept feeling like someone's playing with my hair. Um, and he, um, he managed to be able to, to do that. And again, um, amazing things happened. He woke me up at three o'clock in the morning with a music song, which I haven't got a clue what it was at the time, was rushing through my veins um, like it was ever essence, wake me up inside. Um, but all I could hear going through it, wake me up. And that sound of, because it was hard rock, you know, it was like rock music going through my body. And there was so much energy coming through me. I said, what is going on? So I ended up cleaning my mum's kitchen. That's nothing like me um, at three o'clock in the morning because I couldn't sleep. So I was making myself tea and I was cleaning because you know, I just couldn't sleep and I was just full of this energy. And about five o'clock in the morning, I walked into my sister's bedroom because I, I had to tell her, I just had this, I said, you've got to find this music. And she, 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 the moment I walked in, this energy sort of woof, it hit her. She's quite sensitive herself. And she was like, and I said, what's it sound? I said, like, wake me up, wake me up. You've got to find it, wake me up. And she was searching through the CDs. Does it sound a little bit like this? Does it sound a little bit like that? I said, yes, it sounds maybe similar to that. And when she put the song on, suddenly the calmness came over me. I said, yes, this is it. Now I told my wife about this and she said, yes, but that would happen to you because you're, you know, you're, you're, you're like the way you are. And, and it happened to my sister the next night where she found, she had to find some music. The next night, my wife didn't believe in anything like this. Um, she was woke up with another train. And um, it was like, every time it's another train, another train. And so we had to find the music, another train. And um, she, she rang us up at six o'clock on, you have to go and find this music because I don't want him keeping me up again in this night. And this was before he was even, even had his funeral. Um, so it was amazing stuff going on where he learned to communicate just like that. And there was all this thought about, can the spirit communicate um, very, just when the past, well, he communicated like almost immediately. And um, so, what he actually did over the time span before we actually had his funeral, um, he chose his own music after he died. Wow, that is wow. Yeah. Amazing, yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah, I love your story. I mean, just how a lot of the members sometimes ask questions like, um, do you have to be involved with healing, like Reiki or anything to become, you know, to be guided towards trans healing? And there you are right there, you know? with your experience beautiful yeah. uh, everything it's so funny because as you're talking i'm sitting there going oh i could yes i can completely relate to this part or this part you know so amazing um yeah. i know that you have an interesting um s a couple circles going on um yeah. but first if we can start with what exactly is trans healing what is trans healing well it's an altered state of consciousness I mean, if we're in our daily state of consciousness, like we are now talking, and we relax ourselves so much, we can um, have the ability to change our frequency, but also to change ourselves where we can reach into um, consciousness, which is a far um, more deeper consciousness than what our daily consciousness is. Now, before I go into that, I mean, you've, you guys have had, had a lot about the beta and the alpha and all that, so you guys know what's going on. So when you get down into the, into the theta and the delta, you're getting into, the, into, into consciousness that is a deeper state of consciousness or a higher frequency of consciousness. And um, to go in, going into trance is basically relaxing yourself and just um, making uh, people go into two ways they can go into trance. One is to get to let themselves go down meditatively um, to reach a trance state. And um, when they reach into the theta, they can actually recall information that they see in theta um, and bring it back when they come out of it and say, wow, I've just had all these amazing experiences in trance. I've been to different worlds, different places, 
all that sort of thing. But um, when you um, con you can have the consciousness to just relax and go into trance, go into that frequency. But you can also, um, I found a, a new way of doing it is connecting to the spiritual energy. And I guide, I guide most students to do that. So try this one. It gets around the beta brain quite quickly, which is just connect to the spiritual energy that's going to heal with. Let that energy come into your body and become one with that energy. And you find, every time I find, they bypass past the beta brain and they go straight into the flow of uh, an altered state of consciousness, that what some people would consider trance. Now, uh, I know we've spoke to other people on here where they said those states can be in different, different consciousnesses, but it is an uh, amazing thing. But there's also a way where you can say, let's bring the guide in. And when you're in that connection with healing energy, you ask the guide to join in, then you can find that the control of the guide, if the beta brain has been let go and it's free of that mind uh, babble, um, the, the guide can come in and take over in that way and help bring you into that trance state. Wow. So there's, there's, two, there's, there, there's two ways of going about it, but yet what the, you've got the spirit oriented trance state that you can do, that's it with the guide. But you've also got the, the way that you can meditatively bring yourself consciously into that trance state. And well, the energetic way, which I was telling you, which is just a, a way that I love to work with students and experiment, experiment with new things to work around the, the thinking mind to get them into that flow, as you call it. Wow. You know, I do want to bring up, because I don't think I mentioned this, I know that you also offer um, courses online, correct? Yes. Online, you do the readings, I think by Skype, but most people love that to be able to, if they can't go to where you're at, that you do offer this stuff online. So definitely yeah. check out his website, jasongoldsworthy.com. Yes. And for the English, then he has a German website, right? Is it German too? Um, yes, I've got a German website, but it's, you've got different flags at the top. You click the English one, you'll be on the English. You click on the Dutch, you'll get the Dutch. And you click on the German, you'll get the German. Okay, perfect. So there's, uh, three different languages there to choose from. Perfect, perfect. Um, how long have you been doing the trance? How long have you been doing that? Well, when I started developing my mediumship, um, straight away i used to sit we we talk about sitting in the power mm -hmm. um i had the i would say the privilege of whenever i sat in the power i was just i was gone and i'll be like afterwards i'll be back i'll come back half an hour later and i'll be like where did i go so i believe i was naturally going into trance states back then which would be about you know uh, 10 years ago when i started sitting for that sort of thing um but when I actually start, started going through that, I, I learned trance when I was learning my mediumship and used to do it on a regular basis. Um, so that would be about seven years ago. But when I decided to start a circle for me to develop, then that would be about, about five, five, years, five years ago where I thought, okay, this, I'm going to work on this. So, but continually sitting every week would be three and a half years. Wow. And I know currently you're, you're sitting in two circles, right? Is that what you're still doing right now? Yes. Yes. Because we, uh, we found strange things happening because I would be sitting in my physical circle and I, I started off, um, firstly sitting for skull and then I, we got, uh, informed of, Oh no, you should be sitting really for the physical. So, okay. So we, we were basically following guidance, whether we got guidance outside uh, of the circle, uh, from, good mediums or whether you got the guidance from spirit would say, let's just follow this and see where it takes us. But when I was sitting for physical, um, strange things happen. People would end up getting like the feeling that they're being, that they're being injected with needles or would say the acupuncturist would come along. They'd feel like they were having a knitting needle put in their neck and they'd be like, um, and people were having like, we'd say the chiropractor would come around and we used to make a joke about it because one night he actually cracked everyone's back and neck that people were having problems. And it was just like this click, 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 click. And afterwards they're like, I can't believe it. He's, he's worked on my neck. Wow. And so there's all this strange stuff going on. 
And one, one time a new sitter came in. I said, you, I just said, explained to her, I said, the, just be aware, you can feel some things. Sometimes you feel that you're being touched. Sometimes you feel that you're, the acupuncture is there. And sometimes you'll feel you might be, crap, don't be alarmed. And at one moment she was in a lot of pain and, uh, and she was sitting there after the circus. She said, oh my God, she said, uh, my hip. I don't know what's happened there, but it just, it was so sore. And I, I didn't know what was wrong with it. So I said, just stay, I got some water and afterwards. And she said it was about three days. Wow. And three days afterwards, the, the, it subsided. Um, but what had happened, she always used to have one leg longer than the other. And then after she'd been sitting there, both legs were the same, same length. And wait, hold on, hold on. I have this. I live on a military base, and they're doing the test alert. Um, so it's like super loud. I'm not sure if you hear that. I can hear it a bit, yeah. It's just about to go out. All right. I think we're good. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry about that. That's okay. It keeps us, keeps us on our toes, right? So yeah. anyway, when she, when she told me that, I was like, oh, this is, this is interesting. This is because I thought my idea about physical mediumship was like, oh, you do it like this, and you know, the trumpet's supposed to move first, and um, there's supposed to be something going on with overshadowing, and my ideas of what was going on and what the process of a physical circle was different. And so there was something, there was a different element going on. And I spoke to a good friend of mine, and she said to me, she said, Jason, um, you, you need another circle for, um, for your healing. I said, why? She said, because you're sitting for two and a half hours in physical circle, that's too long. There's a lot of healing energy, so why not just split them up? So I split them up and I sit twice a day, one or twice a week. Once I sit uh, for an hour in the, in the physical circle and I sit purely for my mediumship uh, and healing um, in the other circle. Um, so, yeah. So it's, it's dedication, really. So... Um, and the reason it was because when my friend came to visit me and she's a really good medium, I think she's been a medium for about 20 years. And she said to me, you've got a doctor working with you, Dr. John Gordon. And I said, oh, nice. And she said, you want to, you want to talk to him? And suddenly he was there. I said, okay. Um, and I, I, I always thought I had a guide called John, but, um, that, you know, but I didn't really, I didn't realize that that, that was him. And since she mentioned that, it's like she, she brought us, she, we, we'd always been together, but it's like she ignited him. Oh, now he can work with me. Um, and so since then, since I've had the circle started, there's been some wonderful things happening in my healing circle and my trance of physical circle has been having some wonderful developments as well. And we keep them both to an hour instead of having two and a half hours once set. Yeah. Oh, no, that's nice though. You know, and then it is true, like... Um, you have to be dedicated, you know, to be sitting like that. You know, it's so hard within the groups, people trying to find groups or circles to sit with and, and staying with that circle, you know? So, but, um, so I'm hoping I'm going to word this right. Oh, here they go again. Um, I'm just going to bypass them. Okay. Are there different levels of trans healing? Do you have awareness while you're doing the healing? Um, I feel the, the, there are, and it has a lot to do with where your mind is at. Um, the more you can let go of your mind, your mind chatter, the more you can go into um, like a, a more into the flow healing levels of frequency. Um, and you can be aware of it by how much is my mind involved. Um, you can be aware of it. Um, how, how, how am I feeling? Am I feeling that I'm, I'm present here in my body, or am I feeling that um, my consciousness is somewhere here, but I'm not aware of how my body feels? Um, and that's that's becoming aware. Just going on into trance, where you, what, where level you, what level you're at, and then normally when I go into trance and my guide comes in, I'm aware of him coming in, and then I just let everything go. Um, so that's another aware, awareness level. Um, that I would say and um, other times when I am guided just to sit in trance whether I'm doing distant trance then my guide will, will join me but then I'll go into a much deeper trance where the energy can be sent um, from a distance um, so that's different levels 
that I'm aware of at the time as going in, but when I'm in the middle of it, I'm, my awareness is um, somewhere somewhere about here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all the questions that I have, actually all the members have uh, contributed with, you know, so I do post in the group. And so every one of these is from them. So I'm just trying to make sure I'm not asking you a double question here. Okay. Sitting in the power, is sitting in the power important in the beginning to develop? Yes, definitely, definitely. I can't, I can't do it, say it enough. Um, if I can quickly mention about my development, um, I was one of, the, one of the first people in this area, me and uh, I, you've, you've spoken to Nicole de Haas, she's in my area. And um, we, so it was both, we didn't, I knew about her, but we, we, we didn't quite know each other. So there was no development, there was no circles those, back in those days. So it was like um, everyone had all these groups that they could practice in. I didn't have any groups to practice in. So I just came home and sat in the power every day. And I sat in the power every day. And what we noticed is when we went back to our training as, as mediums went back, and someone said, wow, you must have trained a lot and practiced all this demonstrating mediumship. Because uh, I ended up just, just flying. And I said, no, I just sat in the power. The development. Because there wasn't any other opportunity. So all I could do was sit in the power. So, and I believe that that power has not only helped me with my mediumship, demonstrating mediumship, and, and, and bringing that into, into gear. Because I think I sat in the power at least for three years. Um, you know, and I'd do what I'd call 21 days sprints. And I said, I've got to do 21 days and make sure I get, I get it. Okay, now I can take a, a break and then I'll do another 21 days. So I could keep myself going. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I did while sitting in the power. But it certainly put me in good stead for uh, all the trance work I, I've done, all the demonstrating work I've done. It, it's definitely just brought that along really quickly. Did you... Um listen to like cds or something that guided you into that sitting in the power in the beginning or you just automatically knew and just went in <laughs> in the i i had a problem listening to cds because whenever i put a cd on it's like and, and they'll be like hello and i'll be gone so i didn't need any cds I'd, I'd be i'd just be i'd just be gone and it wasn't when it, it was only then that i realized there's two sorts of power if you want to sit in the power to demonstrate, you want to be sitting in an active power where your mind is a little bit more active, you're not going deep, and then you can just sit there, power up, and you, it's, you, I'd play something like Queen, I Want to Break Free, and I'd sit there and I'd be powering up into an active power. But what I was doing all those years was going into a passive power. So um, not, not good for um, wanting to speed up your demonstration skills, but very good for building the power and the richness of, for trance. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. Um, do you also do distance trance healing or do you mainly work in person? I do do uh, distance trance healing. I have a list. People uh, put their names down. Uh, they send, if they send me a message, could you please send me healing? I do do uh, trance healings for people on my list. And that's where I let the healing uh, be sent to them uh, from a distance. Um, and I've had, I've had people on that where it helps really, really well. I mean, I've had people with uh, that very, very sick where their blood platelets, so they didn't have enough blood platelets in their body. And after sending uh, this healing for about three, four months, the blood platelets have been measured again and they're, they're way up, they've gone back up. And... Um, the person I was sending that to was very, very tired, didn't have any energy. Now they're running 5K, no problem. Wow, amazing. Okay. So th there is there's stuff going on that I say, oh, wasn't it good? And this is what I believe in healing. We can say, oh, it's good that that happened, mm -hmm. but it wasn't just me. It was the spirit world. Yeah. So that's what I believe. So I'm just, the, what I would, I would say, I'm just the medium, you know? And I think we have to be humble in that, in that, in that way. Yeah. I love um, thinking about 
what happens when you know someone's doing trans healing and what the spirit world is actually doing you know so having these experiences in your circle where you're you know the chiropractor is cracking everybody's backs or necks and everything yeah. that's amazing to me hearing those um your experiences as well you know yeah it's it was it was like for us it was like whoa what's just happened here you know this is this is not what we thought this is not what we thought were going to happen you know this just happened you know it's amazing oh yeah um so when someone's sitting and developing so developing their trans healing um can we get in the way by trying to observe and not getting out of the way like how you say you're over here if we're still trying to you know watch everything are yeah. we blocking everything I would say um, big yes to that. Um, I had I just finished a, like a, a, a healing courses with students, so I be I, I observe them, I watch the energy and see who's working with them and all that. And I saw most of the students. Oh, that's really the energy's flowing really well there. And the students I saw the energy not flowing well, and, and I was I, I I suddenly just connected and and felt into the mental mind of what was going on, and all I could hear was. Am I doing this right? I'm not quite sure. Should I, do, should I be doing this or should I be doing that? Um, I, I don't know. I'm doing my best. I hope I did. I practice enough. All this. This was going through her mind. So I took her apart and I spoke to her and I said, Look, are you aware that you're doing this? Oh, yes. I said, you, All you've got to do is just let that go and just sit there and just believe that spirit has got this, okay? And you will notice the next time you do a healing, it will be fantastic. Um, the person she brought with, with, with her to practice was just a guy who doesn't feel anything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just a guy, not a typical guy. Anyway, so she sat again, and that time I felt the energy going, oh, yeah, now that's flowing. So she did what I said. Mm -hmm. And I asked the guy afterwards, said, how did you like the two healings? Well, the first one, I didn't feel anything, he said. But the second one, I couldn't believe it. I said, I could feel all this going on. He was talking about sensations. And I thought that coming from a, you know, quite a butch guy. I said, thank you for letting us know that. And I said to her, now, does this teach you about what's causing this block in your, in your energy? Yes, she knows. And there was another lady. She kept talking to her guide and the energy wasn't flowing there. She was going, okay, guide, what are we going to do? We're going to work on this. We're going to work on that. You know, I'm really pleased that you're here. And all that she was going, so I said to us, could I speak to you, please? Took her away, because I don't speak in front of people when I'm talking. About, I said, do you know, I think it's really sweet that you speak to your guide. Just, you know, the way you talk, to, you, talk to, you talk to them very softly and very gently. Oh, did you pick that up? I said, yeah, I picked that up. Oh, well, I was wondering, how could I, how could I make my trance healing stronger? I said, well, you could make it stronger if you just, just let it go again, let spirit take it over, let the energy flow through you and just let your mental mind go and you'll see a difference. And she came up afterwards in the second healing and she said to me, um, that was amazing. She said that, that I just felt the energy and her partner just felt the energy as well. She said, that's the strongest energy I felt. Um, so, I mean, I love watching energy I love watching the communication of guides between people while working when they're doing the trance healing um it just you know it just inspires me every time I mean so, yeah you're making it sound inspiring like I want to go sit and, yeah. sit and and develop and then uh let go let go you know yeah um can trans healing can a trans healing session be done on oneself the healer um can that be done? Can we go into trance and have the, um, you know, the, the healing be sent to us? Yes. Um, I, I, when I'm doing a trance with people, I, I, I like to let them experience everything. So I'll let them go into trance, experience just the energy coming in. And I say, just let the energy come in and feel it in your, in your, in your body. And so I can, I can connect them say, no, just let it come in and just let it come in for you. And every single person feels that the energy comes in to help with their healing. But then I'll say, let's change this now. Let's just let the guide come in and put the hands on your shoulders and just feel what happens. And everyone experiences that the energy is much stronger and that they feel the energy coming through them and it helps them all with their healing and uh, happening at the time. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Um, Okay, so here's a good question. This was from another member. 
is healing done on the etheric body or the physical body? Or well, <laughs> I was, you, you answered that one right. It's both. Um, <laughs> When, whenever my guide works, he works physically. Um, Dr. John, whenever he, whenever he works, he'll work physically, but he's also working emotionally and on the etheric at the same time. Um, and I find that he can give people physical sensations, um, that he's working insides, uh, they can feel movement within their organs, within their, their body. Um, they can feel suddenly a painful shoulder that suddenly clicks. Um, they can feel uh, physical things going on, but they can also feel on the etheric, they can feel that the energy has changed, that they're more serene, their, their, their consciousness is, is changing, so that they, they, they're working on both levels. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so I know you have one guide, I believe it's John Gordon. You said yeah. John Gordon? Okay. Yeah. You have more than one guide that comes through, and, um, and did they have a medical or healing background in their earthly life, if you know that. Right, okay, so the first part of your question is, do I have other guides? Yes, I've got, um, I've got a guide, it's called White Eagle, and um, I, when I first met him, I called him uh, uh, John. But he didn't mind, he forgave me for it, because I used to call him Chief, Chief John. Chief and John. it was later, when I went into deep meditations, that I felt, oh, I just, I, I felt, okay, it's White Eagle. I felt I kept, kept getting reaffirmations from it. And I know there's plenty of White Eagles out there, because White Eagle in the Indian nations is like, a, it's like the name, um, what would you say, John in, in the English language, you know. Yeah. Um, so, but anyway, and then I've got um, Safir. He's a nice, serene, he helps with healing. On that spiritual level, um, he comes in, and Sophia is very is a spiritual man, a sort of like um, a sort of monk, uh, sort of like Franciscus, sort of a monk. That's a sort of feel I, I have with him. And then we've got John Gordon, um, or Dr. John Gordon, who has the medical profession. Um, he was at a very young age uh, a man that um, basically. Uh, became academically good, was a surgeon in his lifetime, but died at a very young age of 32. But in his lifetime, he'd worked himself up to such a high level and standard in his profession. It was, it was uh, pretty good to read about. Wow. Yeah. So a lot of people always ask that. If, um, um, do they know their guides? And how did that information come through? And then for you to get the validation or to know more, you went into deep meditation. Too. Well, the, the validation was, I always knew I had a John, and I thought it was the Indian, but it wasn't. It was Dr. John. But it, it, I had another medium say to me, do you know that Dr. John Gordon is working with you? So that was validation. And after that, he came straight in to let me know at that moment he was there. And as for what I call Chief or White Eagle, I asked for a sign. And on my website, there's a blog about it, that all the signs that happened um, was amazing. When I went to Canada to work and teach there, um, we, we ended up doing a seminar for people and it was on White Eagle Road. Um, I met some of the Indian people and they treated me lovely and I did a trance uh, demonstration for them and they came to me and said, that is real, that's amazing and I got a gift, they gave me a White Eagle feather as a gift and I thought, oh, that's just, so many things happened and so many eagles flew ahead, overhead. But I'll leave that to you guys just to read my blog about that. Oh so that's goodness. validation for me in that as well. And as for Sophia, I said, I had a healing from um, John of God and I said, wouldn't it be good? And I asked the spirit, well, can you please give me a healing from one of my guides? And one of the guys that came through was Sophia. And they said, we've got the, we've, you had a healing from Sophia. And since then, Sophia's been always with me. Amazing. Oh, I'm going to read that blog. I love listening to uh, hearing the signs and what people yes. receive, you know? Yes, lovely. Amazing. If you can remember, how does blending, in the beginning maybe, how does blending with your guide feel? In the beginning, I felt, because I, I, I felt my guides... Um, because I was more conscious then, you see. So in the beginning, it was like you're in your beta brain and you're trying to just get into the lower stage. So I was very conscious of how it felt. 
And it felt for me straight away was like, I just first I felt the energy behind me and it felt very thick and very uh, powerful, but it was like an energy frequency that when they moved in, I could actually feel them um, moving in. And it was like, uh, it, it feels to me, it felt to me back then sort of a little bit electric, but also a warmth. And when they actually sat within me, I could just feel my whole body just tingling and I, I, I was aware of, oh, wow, they're, they're, they're in me. And definitely the hand palms start going with the energy again. And I was like, okay, now, now the guide is sitting inside of me. And that's how it felt in the beginning. Nowadays, uh, when I go into trance, I, um, they can come in and, and I'll be aware of them just coming in and, I, and I'll be going into a different consciousness close by, but I'm more of an observer than actually being in what's going on. That's very interesting. I always wanted to know, like, when somebody's in that um, deep state of trance, are they, do they still have some awareness of what's happening, you know, yeah. depending yeah. on where they go? Um, so this is a good question. Um, in the beginning, how long did it take you? Well, you said that already. You said you pretty much go in. Um, yeah. I usually like to ask, how long does it take when, to become in trance? Before you to get become in trance. Well, um, it depends what I'm doing. If I'm, if I'm doing a, a healing demonstration, uh, Dr. John will take one, uh, one song and he'll have me in trance in a four-minute, four four-and-a-half-minute song. Um, so it would be meditatively. Normally, I listen to Lisa, Lisa Gerard's Sacrifice, and I think that's a seven-minute one, or I'll listen to um, uh, the Gladiator uh, one, which is uh, We Are Free or something like that. And that's about four and a half minutes. And both of them, in that time, he, he will have me in, in, that, um, in that trance state of awareness. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, so I'm trying to remember. You're telling, you said, beautiful. You're, you're, you're telling the story and I'm like, okay, I got to keep up my questions because um, <laughs> yeah, you're already answering them. When you first sit, um, or when you sit now, is it your, do you set your intent every time? Or is it the same intent or do you change it every time? Um, whenever I sit for the trance healing, um, the intent is to sit for the trance healing. Um, whenever I sit for the trance and physical uh, circle, the intent is, is different. But both times, the, the, mo the biggest intent I have with spirit is I say to them, um, look, I'm, I'm here. It, I'm, I'm leaving it up to you. So my intent is to let them to do, to be able to do whatever they can with my abilities or with our abilities, because I don't believe we do anything alone. Um, so that's my, that's my intent every time, um, just to be uh, the best channel I can be. And that's it. It's just letting go and giving it, handing it over to spirit. Um, okay. So, when you do a demonstration, a trans demonstration, um, do you have like a certain routine you do or you just sit, listen to that music? What was it? I think, was it Queen? Did you say Queen? Yeah. No, but that's, that's um, a different demonstration. That's when I, that's when I get ready for demonstration medi mediumship okay. Okay. on stage. But for a trance demonstration, I'll, I'll, I'll give myself a relaxing afternoon mm -hmm. just to prepare. And so I'll be in that dreamy space, you know, in the afternoon. And well, even when I'm teaching, I'll find if I'm going to do a demonstration at the end of it, I find my awareness begins to change. I feel spirit around me. So I, I quiet things down. I let the students also quiet things down with their uh, exercises. And when I get to the point where I've got to do a trance demonstration, it's like um, the music goes on and I'm already prepared to go into that trance state. Um, as for what takes place, the routine, what you said about routine, there is a routine. Normally, um, I always say, I don't know what Dr. John's going to do. Um, uh, he may speak to you, he may not. And I've always, I'm the human side of me says, I hope he doesn't speak because I don't feel like speaking today. But when I go in, at those moments, he'll speak. So he'll be like, hi, everyone. And he'll introduce himself. Um, last time, I, would, I, I would, didn't plan anything. I just said, just all I'm going to do is go into trance. And normally I feel that Dr. John will probably let everyone feel the energy 
in the whole room. And that's what I think is going to happen. But what I've been told both times I did it in Canada was Dr. John spoke to everyone, um, explained what was going on, and then he asked for three volunteers to come and sit in front of him and he gave them all a personal healing. And then he held hands with the group and so the whole group could feel the energy. And um, afterwards he would say thank you. And the Nicole uh, that I work with in Canada, she would say, okay, um, now it's, uh, Jason's gonna be coming back soon, just keep quiet. She bring me back, and I get to hear what's been happening. But in those moments, I think they're the, the moments that I'm, I have the least amount of awareness of what's going on. And the three people that were chosen to come and sit, uh, apparently they'd all are uh, they'd, they'd all arranged to have a different drive home because I say whenever anyone has a healing of this like this, don't drive afterwards because you can feel sometimes some people have to go for a sleep for an hour or maybe two hours. And all the people that had a healing there had problems, bodily problems. They were all feeling better. Uh, the night, one lady said, oh, I felt really sick and I had to drink lots of water and all this sort of thing. And the next day she thought, I don't know, I don't think I'm going to be coming. And the next day she was fine. So it had taken a whole night to work itself out. And another lady said, I'm glad I couldn't drive because I was so tired. I couldn't keep my eyes open while she was in, in, sitting in a, a girlfriend's car. So it just shows you how spirit is intelligent enough to say, don't take your car today, drive with someone else. And that's what we all thought was pretty fascinating and amazing. But so yes, to your question, um, there is some sort of um, way, way it's done. It's not always the way Jason Goldsworthy will have it, but um, that's, that's, that's what we have going on. Um, and both times that I've done it, it has a similar way of working it way out. People are allowed to come forward, experience it, and we, we get a, a, group, a group healing as well. I'm so glad that you're sharing the experiences of your, your students or your sitters that have come for the demonstration um, yeah. because a lot of people want to know that. They want to know how did they feel? What did they feel afterwards, you know? Yeah. Um, when you come out of a uh, demonstration or, or a trance healing, do you have any effects? Do, is there anything that you feel afterwards? Do you feel drained? Um, anything like that? Um, I don't feel dry. I don't feel drained. Um, I, I'm, I feel quite hyper. Um, so I, you don't want to give me any coffee afterwards because okay. I'll, be, I'll be going through, you know. So I feel, for me, it's, I feel quite hyper. I do need some time to, to come back. Uh, after doing a, a demonstration or doing a trance sitting. Um, so after a demonstration, I'll just drink water, tea, green tea, and just you know be kind to myself and come back slowly and talk quietly to people. After that trance demonstration, because of the buildup of energy, I find that I'm, um, I'm quite hyper, so I need to just you know chill, chill out. Uh, but when I'm doing a, um, the trance circle that, for the healing, I find um, afterwards I need, because they, they work on me on a far deeper level, on a far richer level. I find with them, um, they experiment more. So afterwards I'm like, okay, I might need half an hour here. You know, I might need some time here. And I may need, I also have with me, I think it's called ORS. I don't know if you guys have that. Um, if I get dehydrated, it's just basically um, uh, stuff that you can take with salts and stuff in it. Um, to drink just to replenish yourself magnesium I take stuff like that just to make sure everything's up to date um, and the same for my physical circle um, those effects can be done because in the home circle they, they, they experiment far more with the depth of the trance than they do um, in, 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 a, in a demonstration wow oh my goodness uh, um, I have a question from and I can't remember her name but as a beginner developing trance healing, what does it mean when one feels, and I know you, I almost feel like you already answered this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Yeah. What does it mean when one feels energies around their hands and feet and particularly around the tips of the fingers and heels? This is from a member. Do you yeah. want to that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, the, uh, the, uh, the energies around, like, it's, it's basically the chakras in your hand palms opening up. 
And basically there's a lot of small chakras on the fingertips as well, and they open up as well. So basically it's what I would call the moments that that happens is a little mini attunement that's happened with their, with their own body, their own, uh, not physical body, but um, their eth eth uh, ethic body. They've actually, their, their energy body has, has been attuned to working with more energy. And the, with the, the feet as well, I find that also that's happened to me before. And the spiraling that would, they'd be feeling in the ankles, I've worked with energy where it works. When it goes up your legs, it can feel like it's going up from the feet upwards. And it's basically that you'll, I, I find, I call them little mini attunements that happen energetically to your body um, to help you be, become a better channel, channeler uh, for healing. Wow. Yeah. That's great. They're going to uh, be very appreciative of your response to that one. Good. Um, all right, so I'm bypassing some questions. Um, how important is it, like when somebody comes or or is that you know at one of your demonstrations and they're not quite a believer do they have to have belief in it for it to work does that affect anything um no they don't have to have a belief uh, for it to work um they it depends how sensitive they are um most people that don't believe they're in their head so they're not in connection with their feelings they're a bit yeah i felt something but i didn't quite feel you know um, but still, I, uh, that I've noticed, on, even on people that come for healings that's a little bit skeptical, there's been a change. And they, they, they can't explain, explain the change, but there's been a change. And um, there was, I think there's one guy that came to me for healing, and he's been coming back to me healing much regularly, because he said, it's so good talking to you because you're down to earth, and you'll tell me how it is. Well, I'm about as down to earth as I can get when I'm speaking to him about healing, and I say, Basically, all we're doing is raising your, raising your bodily frequency that your body can take over and do, its, and do the work itself. Um, so even though he didn't have much belief in it, there's been so much change in him uh, in his consciousness. He used to be a guy that was a lot in his head. Uh, everything was matter of fact. And now his consciousness has opened up to, to, to more. Um, physically, things have been changing where he feels... Uh, a difference but being the perfectionist that he is uh, he, he wants everything to be uh, done in one go um, but it's good to know that healing can take place even when someone's not quite mentally um, ready ready for or think that it's going to help them you know yes yes um, how long did it take before you started having one of your guides speak through you um, I think it took me about, because what we were doing, um, I think when we actually got to speaking, because I did some courses in trance, um, and I did a three-day course, we had to get our guys in to come and speak. And so my first, uh, when we first did that, it was like, oh, wow, I didn't, I couldn't believe how easily um, that was. Um, so it was, it was easy, but me being uh, a man with a, very analytical mind and a matter of fact, I'm like, okay, but how much is that my wants? And how much is that what I want to happen? And how much is that me? So I've always been experimenting. So can I get my mind out of the way? So when I really could satisfy, so okay, if I'm going to speak, let me speak about something I don't agree with. And I said once in a circle, I said, um, I, I said to, said to my sisters, I don't think I'm going to speak today. And, uh, you know, I, I really don't um, uh, believe. And then a guide came through and started speaking about stuff um, that, that I was like, oh, and we're going to be working on this. I'm going to be working on this frequency. And we're just changing the energy here so that um, we can create this stuff. I would never predict what's going to happen in circle. I'm always, I, my, my, my way of doing it is like, okay, so that was a sign for me of, okay, this is, this is guidance speaking here because I, I don't believe in predicting what's going to happen, but obviously the spirit world does. Um, and another time when I was speaking was with um, Chief White Eagle, and I said, I'm, I'm going to do a chance demonstration. He's going to come forward, and he, you may see some overshadowing, and it was in daylight, and they did all see some overshadowing, and they felt his energy, and that was really good. I said, but I said, I don't think I'll be speaking here today. 
and he came through and he started speaking and um, he spoke and he spoke about things that I don't have any knowledge about. Like he spoke about the elementals. He spoke about the dimensions of the elementals because the Indian culture believe in that. So I don't know anything about that. He spoke about how, how we had to um, get more in alignment with the elementals from nature, how we need to connect to that. And, the, um, the, and, and these things that he was, he was answering questions that people that were sitting there had in their minds before he spoke, and I and I was like, afterwards I said, "What did you speak? Elementals? What's, what, what's, what's going on?" Oh my goodness! And it's that you know. So that there, there are certain moments where I think. So that took me to get to that point where I was like, "Okay, I'm now speaking about stuff that I wouldn't agree with or wouldn't um, speak about." Um, and that really took me, I think, a good a good two years. Um, just letting the guides work with me and it took, it took a good two years before I could let go of the mental mind saying okay um, because I had to feel who's coming in and I had to okay if I feel the chief is here then I know that's the chief if I and so my I had to feel that then I could let go and know the chief was going to speak now it's like whoever turns up you know at the moment it happens wow. and so it's letting go that that, and that's difficult in trance, it's letting go of that conscious mind wanting to control what's going on. And um, when I could let go of that and just let them speak, they speak about stuff that I'm, that I'm like, okay, fine, that's, that's good that you guys can speak about that. I've even had uh, one of my guides um, joking about me um, <laughs> with oh. this, um, in my home circle, which is something that, um, that I, I wouldn't do. So it's... it's, um, it's it's interesting, but it did take two years. And I think the biggest thing, because we're talking about speaking, sometimes it can be very scary for people when they're first starting. And it's just, just to set, like even the first words that you say, are like, it's like the droplets of God. You know, it's like a first drop, don't go, oh, I only said hello. No, spirit take, took a great leap to say hello. You know, how to celebrate the little things, even if it's a hello or hi. Uh, I'm here, and he doesn't even mention his name yet, or she, just say, oh, great, thanks, Spirit, you're here. Be grateful for the little things. And and also, I'd encourage people, if they're going to be practicing speaking, get a little circle. Get people to, that you feel comfortable with, that you can give you feedback, because then you'll be getting the encouragement and feedback and love, because I believe circles should be created with love. And if you've got that serenity in a circle, then you'll develop a lot quicker because people will give you the feedback. Oh, we spoke to spirit. Who was it? Did he mention his name this time? No, but he did tell us loads of wisdom. And I remember a friend of mine saying that, what was the name of the guide? And, and she said, I've got to tell you something. She said to me, because there was a, a guide, uh, Magnus, and that was, uh, um, it was Magnus. And Magnus said once to everyone, you don't need to know my name. Why would you know my name? I'm just, if I'm a messenger of great wisdom, why do you need to know my name? The, the more knowledge is in the, in the message than in the name of a guide. And at the end of the day, um, you, your guide could be saying, hey, my name is John, but they end up being Indian uh, White Eagle. But they don't mind about a name. It's about the experience of connecting spirit to your soul and bring it through for other people. That's what it's about. Oh, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of the members that are waiting for that first hello, you know? Yeah. So you're making it sound so beautiful and to be yeah. patient and just let, that's the word, let go, you know? Yeah. Let go. And if your mind's coming in in the beginning, just to set the fact, hey, that's okay. It's the beginning, <laughs> you know? And another thing is don't be too hard on yourselves because I know like most students, they're like, yeah, but my mind was there. Was it my mind? Was it spirit? Was it this? And I'm like, just relax. Give yourself a break. Love yourself, <laughs> you know, and just like enjoy the moment. And if it, even if it's hello, just like, you know, celebrate it and say, okay, my mind was there, but tomorrow it will be a little bit further away. And it's those little steps that move us more and more into the confidence of letting spirit speak. And it's, you know, when people can just open up and, and do that. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a celebration, it's a celebration of spirit, it's a celebration of connection. Wow. 
I'm pretty sure that I have, I didn't include this in the questions, but I'm just curious. Do you record your sittings, your circle, and are you planning or being guided to write a book? Um, I used to record my sittings and I have recorded quite a lot of my sittings, um, basically for the information uh, to see what was good. I, I, and I thought about planning about writing a book um, and I have got some, some words on paper from myself, but I believe uh, guidance has been coming through while I've been writing that. Mm -hmm. um, but I've now been uh, moving away from recording and accepting the fact that when Spirit speaks, it's only for the circle at this moment. I do think that will change in the future. I do feel it will. But because they want to work on... Um, the um, richness of trance, of what you would call trance state or altered states of consciousness, mm -hmm. um, they, they let go of the, oh, we need to record this, we need to write this down. And so we said, let's not, let's not do this. And since I've been letting go of, because this is one thing I've been working, it's a good tip for anyone, is anything that you think might inter interfere with your mental mind, like, oh, I've got to get this recorded, I've got to get it down on paper, I've got to get this you're going into trance. So I'm like, let go of that. I've let go of um, uh, the routine. I used to have a routine. My guides would come in and say, hello, I'm, I'm Oliver. And the other one would say, hello, I'm this person. And they'd come in and they'd introduce themselves and they'll come in one by one. And then they'll say, we're going to bring the medium deeper. And then they'd, they'd explain what was going on the whole process through. And I said to, I said to them, Okay, let, let's, let's just let go and just see what happens. When we let go, see what every time I sit for trance is different. Every time. So they, they've stopped speaking. They've started bringing me to far richer, richer levels of consciousness. And every time they're experimenting with different, different things, energetically, behind the scenes, um, because um, instead of me trying to control it or have some sort of system, my analytical mind feels safe that way, I've let go of that to see what happens. But I do believe that once I've got to the space where they want me, because I'm, I believe you're, you're in your trance, and I think it's in one of, one of your questions, is, would be, is like when you get to that trance space, say, when, are you, when do you finally, finally find that you're fully developed? I believe you're never fully developed. Mm -hmm. I believe that if you're developing trance or, or any sort of medium, mediumship faculty, um, it's an ongoing development. I mean, I still feel I'm a child learning uh, to walk, um, even though other people might think, wow, that's fascinating what happens in your circle. And I'd be like, no, but I just feel that, 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 we're, that we're still learning what the possibilities are of spirit, and we're still learning um, what can happen. And I, don't, I think we haven't even touched the tip of the iceberg to the possibilities of what happened um, with mediumship and well, with trance and healing. I love that. We're never, we never stop learning, you know? No. Okay, is psychic surgery a progression of trans healing? And are you being guided or are you, doing psychic surgery now? Um, I believe that it's possible, um, psychic surgery. Um, and I know there's some good psychic surgeons out there. I do believe, um, I have been told by an, another medium that I'm, that I'm being guided to this, but my analytical mind is, we'll just see where that's going. But what I've been uh, experiencing with people that have had healings from me anyway, they've been feeling some sort of sur surgery energetically going on. Um, so I feel that there's a guidance in that direction. Um, but I, myself, I like to just let go and see what would happen. I mean, I still feel that this is early days yet. I know um, what we've talked about, the chiropractor, we've talked about that they're moving about inside people's bodies and they're, they're doing stuff. Some people that have been coming to me for, for healing, one lady, she came to me, she could not sleep on her back and she could not sleep on her side. And she's been in my healing circle for about half a year now. And they've done mini work on her back 
and now she can sleep soundly. She could never sleep a whole night's sleep. And now she, she can sleep soundly on her back. Wow. Physiotherapy didn't help. The normal way uh, doctors couldn't help. But what um, Dr. John Gordon was doing, those little bits were helping. And she tells me, also, there's a lot going on in the intestinal area that's going on. There's a lot of stuff going on in her that she feels in her liver and in her, um, in her body. So there's a lot of stuff going on. Another gentleman I know uh, that's been with me as well, he had a heart problem, he's got a pacemaker, and he said he was feeling quite tired and not quite fit. And since he's been in circle with me for about two months now, his, his health has improved immensely. He's got more energy, he's got more passion, he's feeling more healthier, all that sort of thing going on. So being guided to psychic surgery, I guess, I guess in, in, in some, some way, but I'm, I'm, I, like, I think to myself, um, is it me that's being guided to psychic surgery or is it the spirit world that's using my energy to do the psychic surgery? And then I'm like, okay, so I just open up to the possibilities and I'm really um, over the moon to what's, what's happening. And I know it's, it's not the end of... Uh, my development yet oh no i don't think so but it sounds amazing i'd be you know, super excited for you you know yeah. happening with you yeah. um, is it a progression from trance i think i think it is i think it is a progression from trance um and yeah i just i just feel i feel that everyone has a possibility and ability in their trance if they open up to that possibility then then things can happen you know? Yes, I love that. Open up the possibility. Um, now, this is an interesting question. So, one of the members asked this Do you ever ask healing to go to the spirit world? No. Yeah, I wasn't sure. I figured I wanted to ask you. You're actually the first person I asked as a healer. So, I did, but uh, that member, I do understand why they would ask that. Yeah, I'd like to help the spirit world. But whenever I sent energy, when I first did Reiki, when I first started out in about 2003, I was like, well, let's send energy to the spirit world because I didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. But all I felt was there was so much love and energy coming back to me the moment I did it. I was like, hmm, that's strange. And when I spoke to people that had knowledge of healing, I said, you don't need to send energy to the infinite energy of the spirit world. There's infinite energy there that can, that can give us healing let alone us having to heal them. But what I do know, and this is something I really do believe in, when someone's just passed over, like in an accident or something, you think, oh, I'll just send some energy. I believe that healing is like, it's an energetic prayer. And I've had and heard that messages have come back from the spirit world for someone that sent this healing and energy to, to uh, someone that had just passed over. And the message came, thank you for your good wishes and your energy. Mm -hmm. So it was felt, even though we say we can't, we, 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 we don't need to, uh, there's enough energy there. But what is it? It's a prayer, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's a prayer that you hope everything's going to be all right. Yeah. That's beautiful, very beautiful. Okay, let's see where we're at. When will one know they're ready to step out as a trans healer? Will the guide say, okay, it's time for you to go, or will you just know? Well, um, I believe, check your confidence levels. Um, have you been sitting in the power for a couple of years? Have you been uh, practicing it? Um, have you been uh, in circle for a couple of years? Have you been? And I think if you feel, if you suddenly, suddenly, I feel, I'm feeling the confidence and the guides. I mean, I listen to my guides all the time. If my guides say to me, you don't go out and do uh, healings, they're like, okay, I'll listen to that. I'll listen to that feeling. Your inner guidance is your, your soul's guidance, which will tell you when you're ready but also your guides, they can, they can let you feel as well if you're ready. Um, I feel in this, um, in this process, the, you really need to be totally in tune with your guides, with your, out of your beta brain, into the flow, and have plenty of feedback that, that what you're doing is, is, is good, right? Before you go out and say, okay, this is my trance healing thing, people can come. 
because it's very, um, what do you call it? It's very, it's very personal. When someone comes to a healing, you give them all that love and you give them the time, you give them the attention, and suddenly someone, and you get that critical person coming into your practice and they say, well, I didn't feel much of that. Um, and then suddenly, boom, then it will knock them back and it will knock their development back. So I'm always cautious with students to say, you don't have to go run out there and, and heal everyone. Do it first in a, in, a, in, a, in a place, in a circle where you're full of love, you've got plenty of feedback. And once you've got the confidence there and you've been working on this ability for a, a couple of years, then I'd say go out there and then you know, start, start, start your healings uh, with people. Um, um, yeah. So here's an interesting question. Does spirit work with you in your dreams or at night want to sleep? And do you have recall of these experiences helping you with the trance healing or doing something with you with trance healing? Um, well, sometimes I, um, sometimes I have um, dreams, vivid dreams. If I have to do some sort of um, uh, like say I was going to go to Canada like I did last time to do all this trance work, and I'll, I'll have a dream and I'll be, I'll be dreaming that I'm there and it's been, a, it's, it's been a success. And I know that's only the spirit world saying to me, you'll be all right, don't worry, it'll be fine. You know, it'll be fine. And so those moments happen or I'll have that dream and it's probably just a flash the day, the night before a, a trance demonstration or night before I do some teaching in trance. And they'll, and I'll be like, I'll have the feeling that I've done it all, I've done the whole day. And then I wake up and I'll go, Oh, I'm feeling quite tired. I felt that like I've already done the whole day. But I know that's just um, spirit um, giving that little bit of guidance that it's going to be all right. It's all going to be in flow. Um, so, yes, those, those moments do happen now and again. And I do have recall um, for those moments. Okay, it's okay. Yeah. What has been the biggest mistake you have made in your development? Yeah, um, good question. Um, difficult question. I think the biggest mistake I've made in my development is um, thinking that I've got this, thinking that I'm in control. My development, I'm a medium, I'm in control. When I first started doing mediumship, I thought, I'm going to be a demonstrating medium. And I don't need to do private sittings. So what did spirit do? Spirit arranged that I've got a lot of private sittings. Okay, so I'm doing dem demonstrating and I'm doing private sittings. Then I thought, okay, well, I'm going to be a normal medium. And then someone said to me about trance, oh, I'm doing a trance week this week. I said, why, why ever would you do that? I can't sit still enough to do that. <laughs> so in my mind as a medium, the, 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 the human Jason thought, I'm not going to be doing trance. I'm, I'm doing all this other stuff. So my, my fault was every time I thought, I've got this, I know where I'm going. Spirit had other intentions. So when I sat for um, trance, um, to develop trance, and I thought, I'm just gonna do trance speaking, suddenly uh, it, it was trance speaking and there were physical things going on. And then I thought, well, I'm gonna do physical circle then, and I've got this, so it's gonna be physical circle, and um, that's where my development's going and we'll concentrate on that. And then healing takes place. And then people's get realigned in their body and so, okay. Um, so then that's when you realize that when we just let, then that's the biggest mistake I made was just, if I had let go earlier, just let go and said, okay, I, have, I haven't got this, spirit's got this. Just let go and let them take the guidance, take the guidance from them. So now whenever something happens, it doesn't matter if it's a small thing, and I'll, be, I'll, I'll be aware, I'll be, okay, um, you're happy with the two circles. Okay, so I'll, I'll, be, I'll be more in tune with what they want. And I, I know if anyone says to me, so um, you're a medium and what are you going to be doing next? I said, I don't know, Spirit had got this. I haven't got this. <laughs> oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Um, do you have any advice on how to go deeper into trance to let your guides have more control? Um, the best advice I can give people is make sure that um, all your muscles are, are relaxed, that you haven't got any tension in your body, uh, whatever, and make sure you do that before you start. Um, I think also a good thing to do is 
basically make sure that your, your neck is, 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 is in alignment, uh, that your body's basically straight. And just um, firstly, get into that relaxation physically. And what I, what I normally do is, I, 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 before I go into trance, I become aware of how much sound is going on around me. What am I hearing? Is someone uh, mowing a lawnmower outside? Or is someone uh, talking to the neighbors? Is a dog barking? So I become aware outside of the house. Then I become aware, what's, what are the sounds in, inside of the house? Is somebody cooking? Is somebody watching telly? Um, I'm becoming aware and I accept them. And I let go of the awareness from the outside, let go of the awareness of the inside. And then I become, I let that be my guide to the noise outside of me. How much am I calm inside of myself? And that calmness and the sounds outside of myself, that there's a difference. So I use the sounds to feel, oh, how calm is it with inside? And I find myself in that way, this is how my body feels. And then I go within a little bit more. Oh, this is how the feelings feel. And then you go in. So you end up going within into that space, that, that calmness, where you can go into it that, that easily, more easily into trance. All right. You made that sound beautiful, actually. Um, is there any advice you could give to someone who's just coming to trance development? What would be the first thing that you would tell them? Um, learn how to meditate. <laughs> learn how to meditate. Because um, I, ha- I mean, I've had people, students come to me and say, I want to learn trance. I said, have you ever meditated? No. Um, have you ever sat still for more than five minutes? No. You want to try that first, right? Um, because students that are just beginning with trance, um, it's, it's good. It's, it's very good to just say, look, Try meditations, try short meditations, bring them up to 10 minute meditations and see where you're, where, you're, where, you're, where you're going to, where you're going. Are you deep within yourself? Are you deep without yourself? The best advice I could give is, again, get into a circle that feels comfortable, that people that know what they're doing, because group energy works a lot better. If everyone's got their, 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 their we're going to sit for each other in a group, you would develop so much quicker. And if you've got empathy and love for each other and each other's development, that will speed things up. So if anyone's starting out, I know, because it can say, if people say, I'm only sitting on my own, I say then just believe that that's good enough as well. And, and I think belief is the strongest thing because along my way, I mean, I've come through lots of things where it's like, oh, now I've got to believe. And now I've got to believe in this. I think if you believe in your possibilities, more than what's going on outside in your outside world, more than what's going on in your life, you'll find that that will move you into into more into the into the peace of mind that you're you, that you can make the right choices um, within your life and within your spirituality. Once you've got that sorted, then it's a case of like, okay, now it's time for me. And the sitting in trance, I think it's continue. It's just let go of your your mind chatter that says. Um, am I doing this right? Um, am I doing this? I've been sitting there for five minutes now, I think. Am I doing this right? It's something, um, I'm feeling cold. Oh, I've got numb, numb legs now. I've got numb legs. Just laugh, laugh at your mind. So if you smile, even if you do this now, you just smile at your mind and you go like this and you just smile. Oh, how funny the mind is. Mm-hmm. Your mind relaxes. And if you smile at your mind, then you're becoming aware of the observer of the mind instead of being a part of it. And then you can relax more into it. So relax in your body, smile at your mind, then you'll notice that your mind will relax more and just take it step by step. And um, if you're doing this alone, I would set, I would set up some music, maybe um, I've got a seven minute number, so I'll probably do uh, two times a seven minute number, 14 minutes, and just try and see how does that feel going into trance? Um, and how does that feel? And then I can extend that by repeating the number. And that's how I repeated it, that I could sit longer and longer and longer. Because there's nothing worse. I tried it with an alarm clock. It's dreadful. The alarm clock goes off and suddenly you're in trouble. Oh, God. And you've <laughs> got the alarm clock. 
So set the music up, just not purely because you listen to music. You can put it very softly, but it's, you can play it hard if you like. But if you play it softly, it's just that you know when the music stops, you can, it's time to come back. And that's a very good trick for people that if they're sitting on their own, because, um, you know, the alarm clock's going to, it brings you terribly out of trance. So, um, and always, like I said, celebrate every step of it. Because if you go, oh, my mind came in, forgive your mind for coming in. Because the more forgiveness you have for your mind, even at the moment, don't get frustrated with it. Just, you know, just, you know, make sure that the phone's off the hook and make sure all that washing is done before you sit and that your house is clean and make sure all these jobs are done before you sit. And when you sit, just sit, you know, in the peace and that unconditional love that you're sitting with yourself and spirit and you'll find a calmness will come over you and you'll find that that will help you within your trance beginning of your trance development wow well i love that you included the um people that are sitting on their own because we do have lots of members that are doing that right now until yeah. they find a circle um so we are at the end of our questions <coughs> excuse me um but I wanted you to talk about your event that's going, that you're having for Facebook, your um, free webinar. Yes, I've got a free webinar on Facebook. And basically, it's just questions and answers. I, mean, I love answering questions. So it's just for anyone that wants to come in on the Zoom call with me. Uh, it's a free webinar. People can just log in, get to know me, and they can just ask questions about anything to do with spirituality, mediumship whatever, and I'm just going to be answering questions that members or anyone would like uh, me to answer. And uh, I just believe that it's, you know, not everyone can make it to class. Not everyone can make it um, or afford to go to class. So I like to put these things on yeah, because I, I just love to meet, meet new people and make sure that, to connect people together, but give them good down-to-earth answers that they can work with, you know, none of this, you know, they, they need to have, uh, that's why I believe there should be, if you've got knowledge, what's the point of having knowledge if you don't share it? Yes. You know, that's the way it is. And me being a dyslexic, I don't type a lot on Facebook. Um, I, I will put on what's needed, but because I'm dyslexic, I have to get my wife to check it to make sure it's right. And then she'll put it up and so I'm not a typer. So if there's anyone that writes questions to me, I work best communicating, as you've probably noticed. Um, I, love, I love connection in this way. And so if anyone wants to connect to me in that way, I love it. So I look forward to seeing anyone there. It's going to be wonderful. I believe it's on the June 28th. Yes, I believe so. Yes. 9.30 your time. So everybody figure out your time. Um, but all the links for Jason um, will be included in the post. You can easily... Um, go to the event because it will be there. The link will be there. Um, but I want to bring up, so it is June 28th, 9.30, Jason's time. And it's a free webinar. So don't forget to sign up for that. Also, you can connect easily with Jason at jasongoldsworthy.com. And make sure to click. It's either in English, Dutch, yes. or German. Yes. Um, also, he has a Facebook page. You can follow that as well. Spirit Medium Jason Goldsworthy. And I'm thinking I've hit everything. Yes. I'm pretty, yeah. sure. I'm pretty sure. Jason, I loved talking with you. Your stories, your experiences. I'm sitting here. I'm like trying to take notes because I'm like, oh, I'm just going to have to watch it again. Um, <laughs> but I would love to have you back on in the future. I know you're sitting in two circles right now. We Everything we pretty much talked about was the healing. But one day I would love to have you come back on and share your experiences with your physical. If sure. You yeah, I'd, I'd love that. I really would. Because like I said, I'm not, a, I'm not a typer. And people ask questions in the group. And me have, not having that great ability to type stuff in, 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 in English or Dutch or German, <laughs> um, I'm, 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 be I'm better communicating in this way. And I just felt um, I really enjoyed spending this time with you and with everyone that's watching because um, this, this works better for me than just typing, you know? Oh, I mean, the time. I'm thinking we're like an hour and a half. So it went really quick, but I love speaking with you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for doing this. Um, 
Everybody, thank you very much. I haven't been on here in about a little over a month, but um, everybody's busy. Everybody's schedules are busy, but I'm back and hopefully um, uh, this interview will go out very, very soon. But thank you again, Jason, and hold on. Don't leave, okay? Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Hmm.